The SAT loves these questions where you've got these conditionals and these kind of hypothetical equations and you gotta to start to figure things out about that equation, right? And so there might be set values of A and B or there might be ranges of values. And so we've gotta play with all of these things and try to figure it out. Now we could go to Desmos and I've kind of put all the information in here to, to show you what it would be, right? So if we had f of x equals a radical x plus b, we have sliders, we can play with those sliders, it's gonna change the way this thing looks. Um, it's also gonna change, if you see here f of 24, right? Watch that number at the bottom. That's changing as I play with a, that's changing as I play with b. So we need to make sure that that is less than zero. So right now it's not. But we also have to make sure negative 24 comma zero, that point is on the graph. And that's not even on my screen right now, right? So that's gonna be all the way out here. And so notice our graph has nothing to do with that. So we could play with these values as we make B bigger, right? We can see we're getting closer to that red point, but we could be at this all day, right? And that's the, that's the issue is Desmos is really great. And, and if you've got nothing else to go on, just kind of putting this in and, and playing with those sliders and seeing what happens might get you the answer. But there are other things we can do here before we get to Desmos to kind of like narrow our options. So let's take a look. I'm gonna show you what I would do here. Instantly, I recognize this is a plug points into equations question. I clearly have an equation. I clearly have a point. Let's plug it in, right? Let's just see what happens. So zero is equal to A times the square root of negative 24 plus B. Now, because I understand the properties of zero, I'm okay thinking like, all right, what this means then is I really have two terms, right? I have a, an A and this kind of radical term. And if either of those is equal to zero, then the entire thing will be equal to zero, right? So this is gonna basically give me some possible values of A and B. A could be zero by itself, because if it were, then that would wipe everything out and give me zero. Or B could be 24 because negative 24 plus 24 is zero, and then square root of zero is zero, and again, that knocks everything out. So there's two possibilities. So hey, that's pretty good. Again, I could go to Desmos and start playing with this, but I could also recognize that I have another point. It's not a complete point, but it's something, right? F of 24 means I've got X is 24, and then that's gotta be less than zero. So, all right, let's just do that, right? So A is, times the square root of uh, 24 plus b has to be less than zero. Again, thinking about properties here, I am able to make a little bit of another conclusion, which is that this piece will never be negative, right? So what they're saying is that this whole thing with the 24 in there has to be negative. But I can never pull a negative out of a square root, right? Because you can't get that, right? The square root of something is always gonna be positive. When we use that symbol, it's always the positive root. It's not a plus or minus. So there's no way for that symbol to produce a negative number. So that right there means that this has to kind of be a positive piece, meaning that A has to be negative. But now I have two things that are in conflict. If A is negative, then it's not also true that A is less than, or A is equal to zero, right? Zero is not positive or negative. So those two things are mutually exclusive. One has to be right, the other has to be wrong. So luckily, if, if the left side is wrong, then we still have an ability to get a zero out of that equation, right? Because it could be the case that B is 24. So this is not true. B has to be 24 and A has to be negative, right? So that those two things do work out nicely. So what does that mean? Well, if B is 24, then, and A is negative, then A is less than B. And so just like that, I'm done, right? I, I, if I had more time, there's things I can do. I'm, I'm gonna go back to Desmos and show you what I can do. But right now, I would be done with this equation, I, or this question, I've proven my answer using kind of the conceptual rules of algebra. But these are ones that we should be really confident for, with if we want that you know, 700 plus score. We need to think about how radicals behave. The properties of radicals are really important here. We need to think about function notation and recognize that that's a point that we can plug in. But I never thought about any of that when I started. All I saw was I have a point, I have an equation, let me plug it in, let me see what happens. And that's usually all you need to kind of get the ball rolling on some of these hardest questions. It's just like plug things in. Um, now let's go to Desmos and see if we can prove it and see it more clearly, right? So what I've come to believe is that B has to be 24 right? And A has to be negative. 
Now, if that's the case, look, it looks like it hits that point, that red point that I've got there at uh, negative 24, zero, so that's good. And then if I look at f of 24 in line five there, well, that's a negative number, which also is what I needed. F of 24 has to be less than zero, so that's, that's true. And I could play with the value of a, right? And when we still hit the red point, we're still negative until a becomes zero, where f of 24 is now zero, right? And there we go. If I make it above, now f of 24 is positive, right? So that doesn't work. So I can also play with other things, right? If I made a zero and started messing with the b, right? f of 24 would be equal to zero, right? So this is, this is basically testing the other situation I thought could happen, right? If a were zero and b were something else, then it looks like f of 24 is equal to zero no matter what. But remember, f of 24 has to be less than zero. So this is not satisfying that condition no matter what b is. And if a is positive and b is um, something else, right? We're not hitting that point, that red point. So it doesn't seem like we're getting any closer when we make b negative. If we make b positive, we hit it. But if I go to 25, let's say, now I go past it. Right, so I can test all these possibilities, and this is the, the great thing about Desmos having this slider, is you can move things and test and arithmetize in lots of different ways very, very quickly. But I really think that you got to get something to latch onto for a question like this, and just plugging points into equations gave me those things. Um, you will see questions like this. Uh, it is unlikely it'll be exactly like this again, but this same idea is going to keep coming up on every digital SAT. You've got some weird equation, you're given these conditions, how can you kind of find like certain things that must be true based on those conditions? Well, putting numbers into that equation is probably the best way to start to see how the numbers are gonna interact with the equation, and then you might get to see more things and eventually solve the question. So whenever it's hard, I cannot stress this enough, plug points into equations.